Welcome back to the charismatic voice. One of the most fun things for me to do on this channel is to deep dive into a legendary band for the first time. I know the name ACDC, but until today, I didn't know who the lead singer is, Brian Johnson, and I still don't have a reference for what he sounds like. But that is all about to change, thanks to our patrons who chose this song in our Patreon August poll. Let's get to it! This is such a cool start. Like this is such a cool start. I'm loving this guitar riff um, that developed into something more. It almost sounds like it almost sounds like Bach to me, honestly, um, with a lot of the quicker movements, um, like a prelude. I want to say a Bach prelude, but anyhow, um, I like how quick those movements are, how that they're, you're keeping the same rhythm and you're just sort of changing little bits into chords and having exciting notes in there too. But then on top of that, you have this voice that is a little growly and getting the crowd just kind of geared up on an ah, I think. Yeah, hey, I'm gonna go back to the beginning. I'm, I'm not exactly sure what they're all doing. The vocals are interesting. God's honestly excited. Ah. Definitely has a lot of growl on that sound as well. Ah, kind of, right. You have some uh, distortion that's being added somewhere upper in the upper vocal tract area. And then there is a little bit of uh, true pitch in there that's leading that line. But it almost sounds like just like a groan more than anything else. <laughs> Nice. Nice. Whoa, there, there is a noose there, it looks like, but oh my gosh, that is so many people. I mean, I know that they're, they're famous, but this stadium is huge and there are so many people in it. That's nuts. That's nuts. I was, yeah, look, wow. Wow. That's crazy. Um, my mind is blown by how many people are in there and how many people might must have been doing this kind of like grunty sound. Also, the way that they shifted where the feeling of the downbeat was um, once we had thunder and the drums come in, that was, uh, that was very interesting. <laughs> I was trying to show you where I felt like the downbeat was before that moment. Um, let me see if I can go back further to get it. Ah, bump, bump, three, four, one, two. Ah. I think because I've listened to the song now, I hear the downbeat in a slightly different place. Being introduced for it the first time, before we had a kick drum come in, it left some um, sort of some mystery as to where it was in that first part. Now I can't really unhear it for where it actually is, but uh, hearing it for the first time and not knowing, just having that anticipation build was really fun. And then it had my expectations shift a little bit once that came in. <laughs> Yeah. 
anticipation. It's so interesting to me that the vocals right now basically just sound like people yelling. Like there was a there's a little bit of a line that was in this ah uh, grunty kind of thing. We have some pitch in there. It's a uh, like a little bit of a hook, but it's really relying quite a bit on distortion in the sound. And thunder has mostly just been yelled with a lot of grit too. So I'm curious when we get a vocal melody, what that's going to sound like. So much grit. Ooh, there's some sound. One super shocking thing for me. I think because I heard the ahs and the yells of thunder, I thought that when he was gonna sing, his voice would be lower. I really thought it'd be much lower. And whoa, crap, he's got a high voice. He's got a high voice with tons of distortion on it. <laughs> it's like, what? So much higher than I expected also. Um, I think the band's been playing and performing for an extremely long time. And I have to say his high is sounding pretty healthy still, even like with the distortion, he must be doing it the right way because it sounds like it's in pretty good condition. I'm going to go back. Um, I was just so shocked by how high it was. Yeah. Like that, I heard that, yeah. And I thought, okay, this is going to be like a, like a beefy, like, growly, deeper male voice. No, no, it's high. Okay, so hi, yes, okay, my brain is registering that, it's getting to the other parts of the voice now. Okay, good. Uh, one of the parts I find fascinating is the breath flow. He really knows how to make that breath flow and cut it to grab attention at times. Like what? He did a, a essentially a, a sudden surge and sudden cutoff of that breath flow to grab extra attention, which is really cool. And then it sounds like you've got a higher area, I don't think it's false folds, um, like a higher area of distortion happening in the vocal tract. So his true vocal folds, right, those are the creating, are creating the high pitch, they're going wacka wacka wacka, and making that higher pitch in his throat. Those are the lowest area where we would really create a sound source in the vocal tract. And then above that, there's tons of different areas where you can create other kinds of distortion. To me, it sounds like the distortion he's making here is a little bit higher in the vocal tract. Um, but the, the air usage is really, really cool. I'm gonna come back. Oh, also the fact that he has such good air usage after jogging back. Um, a lot of times if people are jogging, their breath is gonna be um, a little bit more quickened, right? And as a singer, you have to learn how to control that breath flow, which can be very difficult to control right after jogging. I was killed.
Oh, when you hear raised, he's really using the air and sliding up on this glissando uh, up and down. It's like a little bell curve that happens in there too. It's like, it's just really good direction of air. Oh, that was cool. I really love the way they gave that anticipation and drop right there. Oh, nice. Oh, there's like there's a suspension that happens, and I like the way you've been. You can almost hear him breathe in at that moment as everybody else is breathing in, waiting for that moment, right? When it's gonna drop. The crowd is so excited here. Man, what a charged audience in concert this must have been. These guys are incredible performers. Wow, wow. Okay, back. There's so much air in the sound. I wonder also, because I hear a lot of, not just is the voice flowing well on air, but there's also a lot of air escapage. So I hear air in the sound. Um, I guess like, if you think about the air going through the vocal tract and uh, when it comes up to the vocal folds, right, they're going like this. But sometimes there'll be extra air that can come through that isn't just involved in the creation of the pitch. And that tends to be when you get more air in the tone. Um, and then, uh, of course, overall, like you have to have a breath flow to create the tone in the first place. I'm really just talking about that extra air that's escaping in there. And that extra air, uh, he might actually push quite a bit of air through to try and get um, that sort of secondary sound source where we're getting the distortion as well. Uh, but it's fascinating to me how I almost hear sometimes more air and distortion in the sound than I do in the pure uh, just the pure pitch, I'd be really curious to take a close look at that. I, I'm curious, does he ever sing something that doesn't have that extra rasp in it? I mean, or is that, I wonder if there might even be something in his throat that would cause this rasp to be part of the fundamental quality of it. It's so good. Oh my. Oh my gosh. It's like the entire stadium is shaking. Oh my gosh. He sings high with so much distortion and it, it doesn't um it doesn't have much loft in the sound too. It's really far forward at the same time as having the rasp, which I feel like also hangs out a little bit back. Ah, it's right here in placement. It's interesting. It, it even sounds like he doesn't open his mouth a ton in the way that I'm hearing the sound come out. Um, I hear a lot more focus in this area. Um, not much behind the eyes, not much dome or loft in there. Shaking 
Yeah, the way that his sound almost seems to lack body in that upper register sometimes. For a little bit, I thought, I wonder if he's mixing in some sort of falsetto. Is he doing this? No, I think this is all like very head voicey. He just, he can sing high, he can sing high. And even though it sounds like he's got lots of aggressiveness behind his sound, I don't think that he's engaging a really thick mechanism within the vocal tract. He might at sometimes, but when he's singing up in these higher parts, I think he's keeping it rather thin in the vocal mechanism, which gives us that high, probably easier to sustain as well kind of sound. If you're singing with a really thick vocal mechanism the whole time, oh man, I'd be, I'd be concerned about blowing a voice and his voice sounds like it's super healthy. I know. I think a lot of you just were like, wait a second, did you say his voice sounds healthy? And yeah, it sounds healthy, even though I hear tons of rasp, tons of distortion in the sound. Um, he's got great breath support. And I don't think he's making those, I don't think he's making the distortion in an unhealthy way. Plus, singing like this for these this many years, like you have to figure something out or you just can't sustain it. I love the anticipation they build by dropping out sound. <laughs> it's so cool. It's just using silence in a really, really clever way. <laughs> Good for farmers. He also has such a unique sound. I feel like this is a, a sonic staple of sound. I'm gonna have his sound particularly as a reference now. I feel like you guys have given me other reference sounds. Ozzy is a reference sound. It's very, very unique. It, there's nothing else. Um, that's really mainstream and like it. His sound, I, for me, this is going to be a corner sound now that I think, okay, this person, uh, they have a sound that other people have probably come afterwards and tried to imitate. I think that if his sound emerged in lots of settings, it would be discouraged. And I'm happy that instead you have somebody who's just embraced that sound and run with it and it loved the uniqueness of it. Wow. You can really hear him get into, a, there's a little more cleanliness in that line, a little less rasp. And oh my gosh, he goes for that E vowel, which is so bright and so far forward. And I think if you sang this in a studio, most people would say that sounds witchy, but here it works. Uh, I think this lead guitar, I think his name is Angus, right? I think he's one of the brothers that originally started the band. Um, he's so much fun to watch. Like, I just really enjoy watching him. He's totally lost in the music, letting himself be um, carried away by it. It's fun. He's fun. Wait. That move, I feel like I've seen 
people imitate that move when doing rock and roll stuff before. I wonder if that's something that's like a signature thing from him that came from them. I don't know. Let me know in comments in live chat, please. I'm really curious about that. sometimes <laughs> actually that's kind of mid mid low I think his voice is stronger up high though which is not surprising to me because that's like often voices get stronger as they go higher I'm curious though if if I was to talk with him about you know aging and the voice and how is he taking care of his voice over the years I'm curious if it's been harder to care for the lows or harder to care for the highs they worked in that guitar lick again in there oh and you know what I read something about this too I think uh, that the, I'd read that Angus came up with parts of the song because he was in a plane that got struck by lightning ah, terrifying um, but also I think that he'd already worked on the guitar part before it just hadn't been brought into a song um, so I wondered that's the guitar part that they ended up sort of folding into the song. I love the way they brought that portion back there um, and gives a little reminder of where this song came from. Also oh, cool, cool crowd involvement. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So far forward and so high at the same time with a rasp. Oh man. Oh, oh. Ah, there's this is like really pushing on some extremes, extreme positioning, I would say, of the overall singing hole. Whoa. the way that this audience is also very varied. ACDC have, has been around for a very long time, but they have such a big appeal to all kinds of different generations. Um, and I know that because of all of the different ages I see in the audience. Uh, I didn't know that again before today. <laughs> The way he speaks up there, you, like, just got so much distortion on it. It almost, what, what character would that voice play in a video game or an animated series? Right? It, it is so different. That's the kind of voice you want um, to bring some diversity into sounds in the world. It's, whoa. Yeah, I, I will say this hasn't had a huge pitch variation in the song. Right? This is all about 
that style and the delivery and his incredible, unique tone quality. <laughs> right, we've mostly been hanging out with just a few pitches. They're high pitches, mostly. It's three pitches there. Then goes up a little bit and then back down. Wow. Ah! <laughs> nice. I just love his enthusiasm at the end, right? The big band smash, this is over, the bouncing on stage, of course. And I also really liked the way that they shifted their tempo and slowed it down. I feel like it was winding down again, going back to that original guitar pattern. Super cool. Also, Ryan Johnson. Extremely unique sound. I now have that sonic reference. Thank you so very much for that. Uh, great, great choice, patrons. If you would like to see it that first time when I've listened to other rock and roll bands, so you really get what those first impressions can be like, I've got to play this for you over here. Otherwise, may you fall more in love with music every day. <laughs>